Expedite, the pre-workout is designed to really help you get through those moments where you feel a little fatigued. Sometimes your body does get a little tired, you know, it gets a little sore. But this kind of stuff picks you right back up. Hey, what's up, everybody? Marcos Villegas here in Los Angeles being joined with Mikey Garcia, who is now returning to the ring in February, going up against Jesse Vargas and signing a uh, big deal with uh, Matchroom and uh, DAZN. I know this is something that Eddie's wanted for a long time. I think he was like courting you for like a year, but what was finally like the, the breakthrough, like the reason why you decided to say yes? Look, um, we've, we've been in discussions for over a year um, with Eddie and, and the team at DAZN. But, um, you know, there were, I have, I've always had a lot of options. That's Like I said, I like to, you know, entertain and, you know, listen and explore every option available and see who I can work with. And um, this time around, you know, I, I felt like this was the right fight, the right direction. Um, we structured something that works well for both of us. You know, um, it's a one-fight deal. I look at it and I discussed it with him. It's more of a partnership that we agreed on. You know, we're both working together. We do have that option that people talk about. Oh, there's an option after the fight. Yes, there is. But the wording on it, the way we structured everything, I made sure that it was something that can still allow me to to entertain something else and be flexible and look at opponents and and he has the opportunity also to decide if he can you know work with me or not i mean we, it's it's a one fight deal with uh possible you know future fights so we structure a certain way but anyways it's it's a great deal for me i think it's a great fight it's a great matchup and uh you know if things go well and then we you know we linked up and click well then this could be you know a, a longer longer uh, relationship what was the thing that made you say yes, though? Like, was it the, the option that it's just one fight and it gave you, like, the ability to be flexible? Was it the money part that he was offering to you for this fight compared to the other fights? Or As far as the money part, I know that I can make the money, you know, on my own with A, B, or C promoters. I mean, that really is not quite what makes it. But the fact that we can do a one-off fight, you know, and, and still look at other options afterwards and you know, have flexibility, that's what I like. Because to me, I'm still a free agent. Yes, I'm I, I signed for this next fight, but I'm not signed long-term. And that's what I've been doing all, all, all this last, you know, part of my career. I've been working with other uh, companies, you know, with PBC and, and, and Ringstar and, and people are from Al Heyman. And, but it's always been a fight by fight. So, like I said, yes, it's I signed to Matchroom, but in a partnership relationship. That's why you'll still see on the banner, you know, the Garcia promotions. You still, it's a, it's a partnership that I think works well for both of us. I'm not taking more. He's not taking more. It, it's a perfect match. So this fight happens and it finishes. What happens then? Because I read something that he can match any offer that you get. Can you clarify, like, what happens after the one fight? I mean, they're they're is an option like i said but the, the word option can be very broad and vague so i had to change some of the wording and he agreed and we came up with a, a, a good clause you know structured in a certain way like i said that gives both of us flexibility and i mean if if things go well and we can work on on, on the next fight and we'll, we'll do it again but um I mean, I won't be able to give you the exact detail about it, but it's something that works well. I mean, if I sign to it, that means it's good, you know, and I'm happy. All right, Mikey, so uh, we had thought that you were going to fight either uh, Danny Garcia or uh, Manny Pacquiao. I know those names were circulating around with you. So how did we get to here to this point and not those fights with uh, Manny and Danny? Well, yeah, they, they did mention, you know, other names. Uh, Danny and Manny were two other names that were brought up. But... Um, I know Danny was originally supposed to be fighting Errol Spence uh, January 25th. Um, then he, I'm, I'm assuming, from what I understood, he's looking at other opponents that were also southpaw because he's still looking for that fight with Spence or possibly Manny Pacquiao. So he wanted to kind of get something that would already start preparing him for a southpaw. And so that's he, he landed uh, Ivan Redcatch for his next fight. So that's part of the reason why it didn't happen. Um, with Manny, I mean, I would love a fight with Manny also, 
but he i've heard that he might be ready as early as march or april but then i've also heard that he might go into like may or june or further because he still has a lot of obligations right now in, in the philippines in his uh, government uh, uh uh duties that he has out there so i also can't just sit around and wait and wait and wait and not know if i'm gonna get that fight my last fight was march it's been a long time i need something to get back and so we looked at other options, other names, but the one that made sense the most was this fight with Jesse Vargas. I'll get to Jesse right now, but I'm trying to figure out a hypothetical in my head. You go through this fight, say you win, and say the opportunity does arrive with a fight with Danny, and they reach out, PBC, Fox, says, hey, we want this fight. What happens there in that situation? Oh, well, I definitely explore that option. I definitely explore that, look into uh, that fight and details. Um, like I said, the, the agreement that I have with, uh, with Matchroom and DAZN is a one-fight deal, but we both have um, the opportunity to compare, look, and maybe try to structure something that makes sense uh, for, for both of us. Um, the matching offer, those, those options, those words sometimes are, are misinterpreted, but that's why I made sure that it was specifically written down in a certain way that gives both myself and Matchroom the zone, the opportunity to explore and also just have that flexibility to, to compare and entertain and, and just make a better decision. So what do you mean by that? Like, <laughs> cause you're, it's, I, like you're explaining it like I kind of get it, but then again, it's like it, there's kind of like ambiguity there. Yeah, because it's like I said, it's, it's hard to explain and I also don't want to just give out full details about it, but it just is going to give both of us flexibility on exploring other options you know if yes they have you know matching you know rights there but it's worded a certain way that gives me flexibility you know and i can still make i can still have the final call you know it, it's written a certain way that makes sense for me where that's what i'm saying i don't feel like i'm attached or assigned i know it's the big news oh he signed to match room yes i did signed to match room for a one fight I still see myself like a free agent, even though I'm signed to this one. I've been doing this my last few fights. I signed to PBC for the, each fight, for each fight, for each fight. You know, it's basically a partnership. That's what I'm saying. You know, we're co-promoting the event. You see my name on the banner. It says Garcia Promotions. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's a co-promotion. It's, it's a partnership. It, it makes sense for both of us. I'm not taking more. He's not taking more. You know, it, it makes sense. And that's why I'm happy. And that's why I signed. You know, I still feel that. Uh, I, I value my freedom so much and that's why I am able to do things my way. So this agreement came about, I made sure that it was still gave me that flexibility and that, that uh, freedom that I, that I so much uh, uh, love to have. So this fight's going to be at 47, right? Yes. No catch weight right at 47? 47. I've always made it clear that I cannot go any higher than 47. I shouldn't even be at 47. You yeah, know. I was going to ask you about that. Why, why are you at 47? Like, why did you decide to stay at, at 47? I feel and I know that there's a lot more to, to my fight game, you know, that wasn't there in my last fight. My last performance was horrible, worst of my career, and I feel like I need to make up for it. I, I got to show my fans that there's more, and uh, this fight does that. I think this fight allows me to show that there's, there's much more uh, to Mikey Garcia, even at 47. Um, naturally, I should be smaller. I should be fighting at a, at a lower weight class. But, you know, I want to show everybody that there's still more, you know, that I can do. I could be a solid contender uh, and title and challenger at 47. Does that performance with Errol still weigh on you? Like, does it still bother you the way the fight turned out and, and the backlash from it? You mentioned that it was the most, you felt it was the most horrible performance yes. of your career. It was. It was the most horrible. That's the honest truth. But I'm not dwelling on that. I'm not, you know, holding that and and I'm moving forward you know I got big plans I got 2020 will be a big year for me a huge year and those you know those are that's part of boxing those are things of boxing you lose a fight okay so what move on forward it's really I think what, what's gonna show the world and speak most out of, for, for me is how I bounce back from a loss you know winning so many fights in a row and making it look so easy sometimes doesn't give you enough credit and people you know, don't 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 give you the the recognition, but bouncing back from a loss and how you do it and what you do after, I think will speak more of the kind of fighter that I am, and that's why I'm moving forward. That's why I'm picking you know big fights. What'd you make of the backlash from that fight and the performance from fans? You know, um, everybody has an opinion, and that's it. You know, 
they love you one day, they say you're nothing the next day. That doesn't matter. I mean, like I said, I have big plans. The next day I was already looking forward to what I'm going to do next. And uh, it's just something, it's part of boxing. I mean, you lose a fight, you win the next one, or you lose one. It, that just happens, you know. People put a lot more uh, emphasis and, and uh, importance to an undefeated record. However, I don't feel like that. I really don't feel like that. You know, just recently my dad was talking about some fights and here and there, and I'm like, that doesn't matter. And uh, the, the main, for me, at least for me, the the main thing is getting certain fights, showing the world that I'm capable of, you know, getting in the ring and competing at the highest level with the top guys. Who cares what, you know, the fans say or media say? I don't care about that. You know, I, I, I care about my fans. That's it. Nothing else matters to me. If you don't feel good at, at, in the second fight, regardless of like if you win or not, do you think you will move back down? Is it dependent on how you feel, how you perform in this fight? I believe I will perform a lot better, and, and people are going to be like just happy to see me, but at the same time be able to really say, okay, he, he can fight over 47. We, we, we like him at 47. But if I still don't feel that that's obviously the best fit for me or that I have enough of what it takes to be at the highest level, then I'm going to definitely look into 140 pounds. But I feel like will be. I feel I will be able to uh, uh, do 147. I will win a title of 47. I, I know that I will. Uh, Jesse Vargas is seated uh, right behind you over here eating his breakfast. Come over here for a second, Jesse. I want to ask you a question, get both you guys here. <laughs> um, you know, you guys have known each other for, for a long time, so th there's no, no hard feelings between you guys. You guys go back uh, the top rank days. Yeah, there's no animosity between us because I think that the, the respect is mutual. Because we know of, of each other very well. We know what we both possess, which is the talent. I mean, I know he's a talented fighter, and I know this is going to be a great matchup. I think we know what we're in for. It's not awkward knowing that, that you guys are, are cool and you guys are going to have to I fight each other? Position. It's the first for me. I don't know about for you, but first for me. Look, first time that I'm getting in the ring with somebody that I know personally. That you like. You but, you uh, like yeah, yeah, we've done fundraisers together. We've done, you know, toy drives. We've done commentating gigs. I mean, we've hung out. We've gone out, you know, hang out. That's different, but um, you know I got nothing negative, you know, to say. I don't need to push him to, you know, sell the fight. You know, the fight is is a great matchup. He's a talented fighter, you know, champion, you know, two division champion, and and I, I'm I'm a, a champion, multiple division champion as well. So I think that's what people are gonna want to see, you know. And I think I think it's it's a great fight for the fans and for everybody. Did you guys talk before when it was presented and be like, oh, man, like, I like you, man. Like, I don't know if I really want to. No, nah, no, nah, there wasn't anything like that, no. No, nah, I think it's just we know what's at stake, you know what I mean? And uh, in order to come out with the victory, you know what I mean? We, we need to put on a good action-packed fight and, uh, you know, find a way to be victorious. I think he as well as I, you know, will prepare for that. Um, I mean, some very good friends, you know, have fought in the past, you know, and actually have become wars, you know, say Holyfield Tyson. You know what I mean? They were good friends in the amateurs, you know, and uh, they ended up, you know, uh, making a legacy of fighting each other, as well as many other fighters. You know, Gotti versus Ward, you know, very cool, but actually made made for a war. You know, so the minute that the bell rings, I think Mikey agrees that, you know, it's just uh, friendship goes out of the table and it's just uh, fight time, right? Yeah, that's, that's the way it is. It's boxing, you know, and like I was just telling you earlier, um, February 29th, once we're inside the ring, you know, there's no more friends. I mean, I'm there to win. He's there to win. You know, a victory over him, like I said, makes a statement that I'm capable of competing at the Walter Reed division. Uh, if he beats me, then he shows everybody that, you know, he's he's a big, you know, name and he just beat me. And I mean, everybody has much bigger plans after this fight, you know, and that's what makes the fight so interesting and, and has all the elements and recipe for, for a great matchup. So who's winning? There's a lot at stake. I mean, I'm going to prepare to win. He's going to prepare to win, man. I mean, this is this serious business. There's a lot at stake. And uh, I know that the fans are going to be the winners that night. And you know, hopefully I'm the winner in my case. And I'm sure he feels the contrary, right? But no matter what, regardless, I think the fans are going to get what they want to see. And you never know. You might get a trilogy out of it. People are saying that this reminds them of a Barrera Morales you know, fight. We hope that we can live up to the hype. You know, at least I do. You know, I hope that we can live up to the hype. And, uh, you know, but only time will tell us. So tune in February 29th. It's going to be action-packed. I mean, this guy gets down. You know what I mean? He can fight. And, I, and I, that's the reason why I know that I have to prepare properly.
No, I agree. I mean, look, it's it's an interesting matchup, you know, and everybody, there's a lot of questions, you know, regarding my return and my back and my good or whatever. So I think this is a great matchup to answer a lot of those questions. But at the same time, I know he knows and he believes in himself and he knows that a victory over me brings on even bigger things for his career. And that's what, like I said, makes it so uh, intriguing. And, and those elements make for a great fight. Um, I believe the, the winners going to be the, the fans are going to be the winners, you know, because they're going to be in for a great show. All right, you guys. Thank you. I appreciate that. Jesse, we'll, we'll talk to you a little bit later. Mikey, it's great seeing you. Thank you so much. Man right here fighting uh, Jesse Vargas coming up on the zone in Frisco, Texas at the Star.